Shrink yourself down to the size of a pea and crawl inside a lobster's head. And now you are a lobster brain. Every single decision that you and I would make using our ears and our eyes, they make with their nose. Underwater, many creatures make their way through the world conversing with chemicals, molecular messages that they sense but don't see. The lobster offers a glimpse into this curious way of life. When I saw what these lobsters did using just chemical signals, I said, ah, here's something I can work on for the rest of my life. Lobsters are nocturnal creatures. So there's very little visual signals for them to determine where things are. So virtually every single decision they make in their life is through the chemical signals in their world. As a Dutchman, I had never really seen a lobster, not even on the dinner plate. So I looked for an animal that could guide me in this underwater world, and I thought, well, let's try lobsters. Lobsters have specialized equipment for sensing the chemical environment, including multiple noses. They do, and depending on how you count, usually I end up with 12. But the problem is, what is a nose, right? <laughs> The distinction between smelling and tasting, odors and flavors, is a matter of debate. The point is that lobsters sense the chemical world with claw-to-tail receptors. We often think of sharks as the hallmark of sensitivity, but that's nothing compared to what these animals can do. Just imagine here is the lobster. He is going to be presented with a muscle on the half shell. They love that. That muscle is a leaky bag of chemicals. And on all the walking legs are all these little teeny hairs sensitive to food they poke at it, then what they're actually doing is tasting. As if you and I were sitting at the dinner table and tasting with knife and fork. I mean, I'd hate to say this, but for lobsters, it's a pissing contest. Lobsters greet each other with a squirt from the bladder. And what's in that urine is something like, hi, I'm Bob, and I fought you yesterday. These messages are carried by pheromones in the urine. The mix of compounds depends on the lobster's physiological and behavioral state. The urine always comes out two nozzles in the front of the animal's head, and in a fight, they blast the odor straight in each other's face where the antennules are. These antennules are a key lobster nose. Zoom in on the structures, and you find a zigzag of hairs, like a misshapen toothbrush. The hairs hold receptors tuned to smells in lobster urine. When confronted with a urine plume, Lobsters quickly flick their antennules. And that turns out to be sniffing, as in us and dogs and rats and what have you. Urine is also the language of lobster love. It is really touching. She blows her odor in his shelter. He smells it and he says, oh, this, this is perfect. Come on in my shelter. We'll have a great time together for the next week. There are critical things that smell and taste are doing for these animals, without which they can simply not survive. If they lose the sense of smell, their world is completely... It's gone. Lobsters live in a chemical world. Guided to eat or fight or mate by signals they can't see. And we are just beginning to comprehend. <laughs>